<laughs> this is City vs. City, the freestyle flying disc competition that takes place exclusively online, showcasing the top freestylers from around the globe. Brought to you by FrisbeeGuru.com. Here are your hosts, Lori Daniels and Skippy Jammer. Hi, Skippy. Hi, Lori. Welcome to City vs. City. Yay! We're really excited that everybody's here. Toronto's ready. Medellin's ready. I'm ready. You're ready. I'm ready. Let's do this. So anyway, so uh, welcome. And I'm Lori Daniels, and this is my co-host, Skippy, Skippy Jammer. Jammer. Yeah, and this is City vs. City 2020. We have seven battles that we're about to have across many months over the year. And so uh, we're going to start off with uh, four round one battles. Uh, pretty much about this is going to be like the round pairing off. And then it's going to reduce down to four teams for the semifinals. And that will reduce down to two teams for the finals and so then we will know for 2020 who has earned the keys to Haynesville so last year the finals were really exciting actually we had Berlin versus New York City and it was one of these uh, literally the battle it looked like New York City was going to take it and then at the last minute during the 1v1 battles that's when actually uh, Berlin came ahead so it came down to the last battle very very exciting and so uh, we're hoping for something similar this year in terms of how exciting each of these are. And then, um, and then two other cities. Uh, so we have two returning cities. Uh, we have actually four returning cities, New York City, Berlin, Medellin, and Bologna. So, uh, so we'll see those other cities uh, be played later on uh, next month, actually starting next month. But we also have uh, new cities, Skippy. Yeah, so the new cities that we have is Toronto, which is being featured today. Also, um, Warsaw, um, uh, Riveretto, and who else am I missing? So so next month is going to be Rome versus Bologna. And then in March, it will be New York City versus Riveretto. And in April, it's Warsaw versus Berlin. And then we go on to the semis and eventually to the finals. So that's our format um, and that's our schedule. So it's going to be exciting. It's global. Uh, I know all of these cities are energized and, and enthusiastic. And we're really excited about the expansion of the city versus city format. Mm -hmm. So, Yes, absolutely. And so uh, actually, this is no small feat done by pretty much one person behind the scenes, Jake Gothier, who is the Frisbee guru. Um, you might know him from Shooting the Frisbees. Yes, frisbeeguru.com. So you might know him from Shooting the Frisbees podcast with Randy Sylvie. And so actually Randy's in Medellin, probably behind the scenes. He's working with the judges. Jake is behind the scenes, actually working with the teams. And then Skippy and I are here to host the show and make sure everything kind of moves smoothly. So thank you so much for joining us. If you like things like this, the live streaming of tournaments, Shooting the Frisbees podcast, uh, city versus city, then uh, feel free to visit us at frisbeeguru.com and become a patron or don't or buy a cup or a t shirt or stuff like that because it really, really does help us uh, continue these endeavors in the future. So, but it's great that you're here and we're excited to start our first battle of city versus city. So let's jump into the two cities. I'll, um, we'll do an overview of, this, of the cities, what they mean historically, and then we'll dive into their, their rosters to see which jammers they're going to present to us. So we start off with Toronto. And interestingly enough, Toronto is considered to be the birthplace of freestyle. In 1970, then Jim Kenner and Ken Westerfield began doing uh, demonstrations at Queen's Park. And that laid the foundation for the future of the sport. Uh, also in 1974, the very first formal freestyle competition was uh, held at the Canadian Open that year and won by the venerable Westerfield and Kenner. And they were our original freestyle champions. Um, this team is led by former world champions Gary Arbach and Brian McElwain, as well as longtime jammer Patrick Chartrand. 
Now, on the other side of that is Medellin. So historically, they're new to the scene or relatively new. Um, in 2014, then the FPA World Championships was hosted in Medellin, Colombia. And that started a huge expansion and growth period for them. And they just had a tournament there last weekend, Juntos de Mejor, meaning to, together is better. And certainly that is true. Uh, they are led by uh, Pablo Azul. Uh, their team captain uh, is Alfonso Lopez, who will help uh, help them coordinate. So we begin with Juntos de Mejor. We are all better for being together. Yes. It's a great, great, great theme, and it was a really exciting tournament to see. So they're all fired up, obviously. So uh, <clears throat> what we're going to do is, and I'm going to ask Medellin actually to... Um, lower their camera a little bit so it uh, meters off the ground versus the sky because it's harder to see the players visually. That's so much better. Yes, yes. You can raise it up a little bit more, Medellin. I could see the four, yeah, just a little bit, but perfect, perfect, perfecto. Perfect, okay. So introducing the team from Medellin, Pablo Azul. And Juan, Juan Piercing. Awesome. Andres Rivera. Monica Correa. And Santiago Sepulveda. Yeah. <laughs> and that is Team Medellin. And I'm so happy to see Monica as part of this team. It's a pleasure, uh, of course, to see a female jammer. I'm very excited that she's playing in City versus City. Yay! <laughs> okay, so Team Toronto. Okay, so stepping in front of the camera, please, will you, Patrick Chartrand? Yeah, Patrick, great to see you. And John Solis. Hey, John, nice to see you. Nice shirt. Jolan Canrinas. <laughs> Chillin. So, and Brett the Jet Shamrock. <laughs> and Brian McElwain. Oh. <laughs> Looking good, champ. <laughs> okay, so those are our teams. So now we will talk about, with, a vi with our next video, the format and the judges. City vs. City is a battle-style format. Players are matched against the opposing team. After each battle, the judges choose a winner. Each battle is worth 1, 2, or 3 points for a total possible of 10. In the 1v1 battles, each player is matched up and receives one throw. The team that wins the previous round must choose their next competitor and plays first. In the pairs battle, two players from each team play for two minutes, for two points. In the co-op battle, the remaining three players from each team play for three minutes, for three points. If there is a tie, each team will choose a champion for a final 1v1. Our three judges for this event are all inductees in the 2019 Freestyle Disc Hall of Fame. They are... Bill Wright, Steve Hubbard, and Larry Impuri Alley. And so there you have it. We have some very illustrious judges there. Peers of yours, Skippy, from all the Freestyle Hall of Famers. And we would want nothing less. They're all the power best. counter jammers. So if you are one of the Toronto or Medellin jammers, you know how to impress them. 
Yeah, I guess so, actually. I didn't even <laughs> think about that. So anyway, I think we're going to use our do our coin flip now and get started. That sounds great. So, explain how the coin flip works. So the coin flip is going to be... If, so Jake has an electronic coin flipper going on, so watch the bottom of your screen there with the blue square. Uh, heads will be Medellin will play first. Tails will be Toronto will play first. Flip it. Flip the disc. It is Tails. Toronto will be playing first. So Toronto will identify, we're starting off with 1v1 individual battles, so Toronto will choose their battle person first, battle player. Okay, we're ready to go. The player for Toronto will be Brian McElwain. Okay, so Brian McElwain will be battling first, Medellin. Will you please tell us who is going to be the battle partner with Brian? Uh, with Brian. Uh, Brian. Brian. Charco. Brian. Charco. Uh, I'm going with you, my friend. Santiago. <laughs> okay, Santiago Sepulveda. And we'll be playing yeah. after Brian McElwain. Okay. 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 Pay attention now. Easy. Hey, Brian. <laughs> We're ready for you. <laughs> We just go when we're ready? Yep, you're live. <clears throat> Everybody out of the way? Okay. And here we go. Yeah. Okay, and we're off. He did a nice little insight against the spin crank and dropped his little demo behind that catch. Sure he wants that one back, but we go on to Medellin. No, <laughs> oh, I'm glad I'm not judging this. So, <laughs> a nice start as well. He showed some skill with uh, with his bad attitude, um, uh, freeze, and then some tipping, and then he dropped the easy bad attitude catch. So two two players of them wish they had Mulligans. Let's see how the judges look at this. It's going to be close. Yeah, it's going to be close because, you know, obviously if you catch, it's going to be a stronger impression on the judges. However, both teams are, uh, both players are solid. So this is so exciting. Just so we have, drop these catches. So we have some of the best judges we can imagine right and so we might as well see how what they thought about it because there are nuances that some of us may not be paying attention to yeah it's also interesting that we have two different environments we have an indoor scene in toronto i'm sure it's it's less than ideal conditions outside and then in warm and, and looks like it's sunny down in medellin um it looks like a nice day out so i don't know if, it, if it's windy there or not it doesn't look like it but the two different environments so there's the score. Lori, go ahead. The score, Medellin takes the very first okay. battle. Okay, so good job, Santiago. So now... So as you can see right below us is the scores, our scorecards. So we'll be paying attention to that, and that's how the judges will be communicating to us what, they, what, they, what their decision was. So that means now Medellin chooses the next battle. Card. Monica. Monica. Hey, so Monica. Good job. And so now 
Toronto, please let us know who is going to be battling with Monarchy. Toronto will, uh, I'll go for Toronto, Patrick. Okay, perfect. But I also really, uh, it, it's interesting because Monica is a newer player. He's playing outdoors, and Patrick is a very seasoned player playing indoors. And so it's like the variables, like you're saying, are so different from one another. But but also both played really, really well. Very exciting. So we, we're waiting for the judge. Oh, and so there's the score. Toronto, Toronto gets the second battle, wins the second battle. Okay, we're so that means, a ball game. Got a flat that's ball game. Right. <laughs> that's right. So that means now Toronto, you are choosing who's gonna play and start off our third battle. Okay, we're putting out Brett, and he's gonna go second. Brett the Jet, here we go. Actually, uh Brett has to play first. Yeah. And then, so, Medellin, could you please tell us who is going to be battling against Brett? Pablo. 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 Pablo Azul. Pablo. So we have, we have two World Urban Games athletes yeah. here battling hey. against each other. Just uh, let those know in case you've seen these faces before. Okay, so, Brett the Jet Shamrek versus Pablo Azul. Go ahead, Brett. We're ready. Oh my God, I love it. It's awesome. You know, Brett has come so far, so fast, and his potential is just extraordinary. He did a so, nice uh, a, a nice oh, skid a crank behind the, the back and terminated with a fantastic guidance. Go ahead, Lori. Yeah, that guidance was for you. Okay, so let's see what Pablo Azul's answer to Brett will be. Vamos a leer, con toa. <laughs> that would have been epic. Oh wow! Yep. Well, Good awesome. effort by Pablo. He's, yep. you know, he shows such great skill with um, his control of the disc. His passes. He did that little wiper blade thing, and then um, he started uh, brushing it to add some spin for that big termination spinning barrel guidance attempt. That just it hit his hand, and it just popped out. Yeah, both players were doing some really complex stuff, a lot of skids, moves, but uh, Pablo took an upside-down throw, too. That's the first start, upside-down start we've had. Yeah, good point, Lori. So we're waiting for the judges. Yeah. So both Pablo and Brett were uh, were the World Over Games. Oh, wow. So Toronto actually is taking the third battle. According to yep. uh, Say, host, that, you can uh, see the chat and see the judges' results and build it up, build up the anticipation a little bit. Okay. So then, uh, so now that means that Toronto is going to once again choose who is going to play first in this next battle. Okay, we'd like Toronto would like to go second, so we'll let Medellin. Well, actually, um, I'm sorry if that wasn't clear before. the The winner of the last battle always plays first. Okay, no problem. In that case, we're sending out Johnny Soul. Right. Okay. Yeah, Johnny. And so, before, before you start, Johnny, before you start, before you start, we need to have Medellin identify who is going to battle against Johnny. Juan Peter Singh. Okay, Juan Peter Singh. Okay, awesome. Okay, so Toronto will be playing first. We're ready for you, Johnny.
Oh, okay. <laughs> Couldn't oh, quite get that one going, could he? Not quite. And unfortunately, there's no mulligans. There's yep, no two No first mulligans. Game. Part of the one beauty of it. Mm -hmm. So, one hey, first, you're up. So, so, straight into Betty Jean. Here we go, one. Nice try, but he showed some skill and he, he did some passes and, you know, he, he put something up, up there on the board. So this one should be an easy decision for the judges. Yes, exactly. And so obviously we already, I think, uh, I think we're seeing the judges, our, the scores are coming in. It is tough because, because of the harsh rules and I think it does add pressure it does. to the players because yeah, we saw that last they know. With the New York City versus Berlin, the very last yeah. one. Yes, that's right. When when we there was a lot of build up, but then suddenly it wasn't. Yeah, yeah it's just a, a moment of lapse or something. So judges' scores that came in. We see that Medici took the fourth battle. Yeah, we're all tied up. We're all tied up, and we have one more individual battle left. So Medici will be playing first. And we're left with Andres Rivera. Yes. And. Okay. Jolan can read this. Yes. Be his opponent. Okay. So, Medici, we are ready for you. Okay. We are ready, Andres. Okay, he tried that little clever inside pull and it just got away from it. Popped off of the nail. Yep, yep, yep. So that has to be disappointing because we know that from last week's tournament that Andres is, is extremely, he's got a deep he game. Did. Deep right. game. Oh, Toronto. Dylan has the show. Uh, Toronto, you have a pay per view. They must have a delay in their broadcast. Got some good strategy. Okay, are you guys ready for Dolan? Yes, we are ready for him. Nice, a nice combination. He did a lot of intricate stuff and a nice solid spinning barrel catch for the win determination. That was solid. Really. Yeah, it was very, very solid. And so this is part of the thing you cannot predict at all how this is going to play out. So, uh, so we what's exciting is that when we have a two-two score like we do right now, co-op now becomes very same, important. Same thing. Right, this so, is coming down to the co-op. That is so exciting, and that's that's part of the beauty of all this. Besides the fact that we have uh, people who are thousands of miles away from each other getting to play frisbee together today. <laughs> that's right, the exactly. other magic of this. Yep. So, so the, uh, ju the judges' scores are coming in right now. Yep. And it looks like yep. Toronto... Yep, yep. Project so we're now moving to the pairs division. And then after that, the co-op, which will be either resulting in a tie for overtime or to decide the winner of this round. Okay, so that means at this point, Toronto, having won the last battle, actually yeah. will play their pairs team first. So yeah. what we'll do is we'll have Toronto identify for us in front of the camera 
who their pairs team will be. Then we also will will meet the Medellin pairs team, and then we'll have Toronto play first. Okay. So yep. Toronto, please tell us who is your pairs team. There they are, Johnny and Jolin. All Johnny right, and Jolin. Representing the University of Guidus. University of Guidus, excellent. Beautiful shirts. That's for you, Skippy. Okay, so Medellin, who is your pairs team? Pablo and Juan. Well, a dynamic duo for sure. Those guys really, really uh, impressed ever since Worlds, especially since Worlds of, of 2014. Okay, so Toronto, I believe we get to see you, your pairs team first. They'll be playing for two minutes, and the pairs teams are playing for two points. Two points. Nice little speed flow here. Hey, that's it. Two minutes. Yeah, that's a really nice performance by Toronto, actually. A lot of variety there, a little speed flow. Yeah. It was interesting to see how quick the moves are. There's lots of very short combinations, a lot of uh, uh, very quick exchanges back and forth. They use clock and counter effectively both. Um, and, and I really like their use of space, how they were able to move around that little small contained uh, uh, jamming space. And they used it to their advantage. I thought they looked great. Yeah, I thought they, they, it looked very smooth, and clearly they were prepared for this. It's almost like a tiny room challenge, right? Yeah, of, it uh, almost uh, is, yeah. A pair's <laughs> tiny room point. challenge in there, yeah. So the, the uh, I guess uh, they had 11-plus co-ops and exchanges wow. throughout that two minutes. So yeah. two minutes to compress that many interchanges. So that, that indicates pretty high risk, right? Yeah. And then I guess they got a ton of catches, uh, very strong for only four drops in that okay. two minutes in spite of the 11 uh, exchanges. So pretty exciting. Toronto is ready. So. Toronto okay. is uh, clearly stepped up. Okay, Medellin, we're ready for you.
Bueno, muchachos. And there you have it. So, so again, the contrast, they're playing outdoors. There's a little bit of wind that they can play against, um, but they, they, I thought they matched them very well. They had a, a lot of variety. Uh, did I even see a change of spin? Did he change that spin on that late combination? Um, uh, there's upside down, there's clock, there's counter, there's Kick turnovers. Rushing. All Kick kind, rushing. Yeah, rushing. A lot of variety. And yeah, I wasn't tracking entirely the number of combinations but it seemed like they had 10 or 11 as well and only a few drops so we'll play thank you yeah nice job guys i'm i'm, I'm glad i'm not one of the judges yeah, yeah exactly bill, bill larry and steve i mean they have the expert they got expert their eyes yeah they got their hands full but i was thinking in the middle of watching medellin i was like oh i'm so glad i'm not a judge <laughs> so medellin needs this to to force overtime with the co-op. So this is going to be, again, really important. And it's going to be very, very close. It's yeah, going to be, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, you're really splitting hairs here. Yeah. The scores are coming in though now. And so it looks like we have, uh, we have one, two, ah, it's so close. We have all three judges are giving the nod to Toronto. Toronto takes it. Toronto takes pairs. But yeah! So now Medellin needs to win co-op to force overtime. So that's what we're looking at. So this is exciting. I mean, this is awesome. Oh my God. This is what we wanted as fans. I know. I tell you. So really co-op is now a very, very, I mean, it's going to make the difference. Because just to let you guys know, as we are uh, going to be identifying the co-op teams, if there's a tie, we'll explain what happens with the tie. We'll explain yeah. the, uh, the chooser champion, as was talked right. about earlier. So now, because Toronto... Because Toronto won the pairs, that means they will be their co-op team will be playing first. So we need Toronto to identify their co-op team, and then we're going to meet Medellin's co-op team, and then Toronto will play. So Toronto, if you don't mind, please let us know who your co-op team is. Us three guys right here, myself, Brett, and Ryan. Okay. All right. Very, very strong combination there. So that's going to be the first playing uh, co-op team. And then Medellin, who is going to be battling against. There you go. There's the three. The three left. Great. Awesome. So hello. And then stay tuned. We're going to watch Toronto play now co-op. This will be worth. They'll be playing for three minutes for three points. Okay. So Toronto with the two veterans and Brett the Jet.
So it was interesting to see um, the veteran leadership of Patrick mm -hmm. and Brian. Um, they look so comfortable out there. They, they have a calming influence on the little turbo shredder, Brett the Jet. And, and I thought that they complimented uh, Brett very well. Um, th they were able to set him up so he could do his big catches. Um, it makes it really look dramatic. But I like their variety. I like that veteran leadership and th their ability to feature the big shredder. Yeah, definitely. And so now we get to see how who's going to battle next from Medellin. What is your answer to Toronto's um, performance in three minutes? Okay, Santiago, Monica, and Andres. That's okay, wonderful. let's see you guys. I look forward okay. to seeing uh, it. Awesome. Sorry, uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, our song it starts at fifty fifty seconds. 55. Okay. Okay, 55 seconds. Okay, so I'm assuming that you arrange this with Jake because we have your, we have, I think, uh, Jake, you got it. Okay, Jake's got it. He said right. he's got it. Okay, he's ready for you. Good. Okay, okay shred it, guys. Yeah, just play uh, 55 seconds, okay? All right.
<laughs> okay, there you have it. So, so it's interesting. I don't know if they felt the desperation of of the situation or the magic of the moment, but all of the other routines that we had seen up to that point were all very careful, very calculated, mm -hmm. and they decided, screw that, we're going to shred. <laughs> and so you saw them just pop out of their hands, going for big moves, but you also saw them hit some huge moves. So yeah. it's going to be an interesting contrast between like the demo-controlled uh, style that Toronto was was displaying with the, the nice, concise movement and, and, and clever catches. And with the Medellin approach of we're going to shred. And if we drop it, then we were completely going for it. So really a, a contrast of styles here, Lori. Yeah, if you think about it, though, Medellin really has nothing to lose at this point. Yeah, and they right? played so, like I mean, yeah. yeah, they played like they, they had nothing to lose because they have to have. And, and they, it looks like. We got overtime. Oh, my God. This is awesome. What a start to the 2020 City versus City. It comes down to overtime. Wow. So it, sounds, it sounds like, actually, that uh, the judges were recognizing Medellin's shred factor and really that, that they were actually just going out there to, to, to just put it all out there. So this is now um, something that we anticipated maybe could happen, but we don't yeah, think it's going to happen every, every battle. So this right. is now a tie which yes. means this is the opportunity for each team to do what's called choose your champion. In other words, we're going to have one more 1v1 battle against two players that are chosen by Toronto and Medellin. They choose whoever right. whoever's played first, and then they're going to battle it out like we did before in the 1v1 yep. part. And then whoever wins. So this is pretty much sudden death. Sudden, sudden death, death. Choose your sudden champion. Sudden death. One versus one. And Medellin will go first. So Medellin needs to select their champion for the overtime shred off. Okay. Well, it looks like they're... Who, who is it? Andres Rivera. Okay. I'm Chris Rivera. Okay. okay, so he will be battling against who on yeah, from Toronto? Who are you? Who are you bringing up? Okay. All right. Okay. Dolan. Yeah. Okay. All right. So Medellin. Yeah. So we'll play first. We are ready. Okay, here we go. The spread on. Okay, so a, a long combination, uh, some rejuvenations, um, some clever moves, showed some really strong control, missed the spinning barrel guide us. So, uh, yeah, double spinning layer. Yep, yep, double exactly. Double spinning barrel guide us. Okay, so Toronto, there you have it. Yeah, you know what you they, have to do. Yeah, I think they have a little bit of a delay, but uh, I think... So we're still watching. Okay. okay. Give us a it's like well, it is. It is choose your champion, so they do need to take in all the yep. data. And this is John Souls coming at us. Okay, you guys ready? 
We're ready. Yes, we okay. are ready. Some good, uh, solid counter control. Did some clever passes and some rejuvenations. Goes for what appeared to be a nice, straightforward guidance, and again hits his hand and pops out. Yeah, so, so we do not measure, actually. Yeah, it's a measure I, I, of the content prior to those two drops. Yeah, I mean, I think it's interesting because again, the pressure's on when it's one v one, right? There's a little right. bit more pressure right. in terms of how people play, and so it's not surprising to me. To, to actually have that last little moment, just not fully execute. But in some ways, it's it actually evens the, evens things out a little bit more in terms of what we just saw prior to the drop. But uh, both both played really strongly, and I would think that 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 was a good matchup in a lot of ways. Yeah. So so let's look at it from this perspective. Coming into this competition then we were hoping for something close and i don't think it could be any closer here in the final shred off the final one versus one to determine the champion between medellin and toronto and so once again the judges are tasked with splitting hairs what seems to be a very close competition will be defined by somebody being the champion and somebody stepping away from the table Yes, yeah, so what's why so the seeing the judges, yeah, the judges are are, are dialoguing right now because obviously this is something that's that is important, but you could see that um that they're taking in all of both Toronto and Medellin's uh, deep games and their ability. But I would say that it looks like I'm gonna hear the results from Jake. We're gonna hear the results from Jake. So there it is. Medellin gets the one v one. The choose your champion. So, seriously, that was an amazing, amazing battle. All of them. Each one of them. So, Medellin wins the very first 2020 City versus City. Well done, well done. Battle one. Six points. Toronto with five. What an amazing, what an awesome, awesome effort by both cities. Okay, so, let's give we credit to Freestyle City. Toronto, you guys played fantastic. Each and every one of you did everything you could to elevate this game, to make this an exciting competition. I'm thrilled with how you guys presented yourself. So let's have a round of applause for Toronto Freestyle City. You guys are awesome. And now to our, to our initial round one champions, Medellin, Juntos es mejor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so congratulations, so we, Betty Jean. Yeah, so before we sign off, stay on the camera, please. What we'll do is we need to talk about the the next battle, and then uh, and then while Skippy does that, after Skippy says that, we'll we'll do some thank yous, and then we'll sign off. So Skippy, tell us yeah. about the next battle. Yeah. So the next battle is uh, we're coming up uh, about a month from now. And it's going to be Rome versus Bologna. So we have Bologna returning to the format and the new city of Rome. And uh, I th um, I'm, I'm excited to see. What I, they have it on my, I have it on my schedule as Berlin versus Warsaw. Jake, oh, could what? you clarify which one it is? It's Berlin okay, versus Warsaw. Sorry, Berlin versus Warsaw. So uh, Berlin, the champion the, uh, from last year, and we know what they are. They're, they're a, an incredibly deep and talented team. And then Warsaw, I was so thrilled to be able to see them in person at the World Urban Games, some of their representatives. Um, and, and I just love their approach to, to playing. They're young, they're enthusiastic, um, and it's all about the shred and the flow. So Warsaw versus Berlin coming up in a month. So um, yeah. We'll post February that. February 29th. Facebook. Yep. Okay, thank you. February 29th. And Leap day. Yep. Okay. Leap day. Uh, and uh, hats off to Scott Weaver, who I think will be turning 18 years old that day. 
<laughs> That's awesome. So really we awesome. will be having a series of battles all the way through. We have one in February, February 29th. March 28th will be New York City versus Rovereto. April 18th, Bologna versus Rome. And then we will go into the semifinals. But uh, before we end up saying goodbye and aloha to our lovely two cities and our judges, I uh, wanted right. to say thank you again, yeah. sponsors for Frisbee Guru, Discraft, X-Disc. Uh, thank you, our donors and our patrons to Frisbee Guru. You're the ones who are keeping the lights on. Um, and you can also become a sponsor if you're not one yet. For those of you watching and listening, uh, by going to frisbeeguru.com. Um, also wanted to uh, make sure that we got a chance to uh, to thank our viewers. Skippy, you want to take that one? Go ahead, Lord. Okay, so we have... So thanks to both city teams, really Toronto and Medellin have been working all week with Jake to be able to get all their technology together. So mahalo and thank you and uh, gracias for all of that. Uh, but also thank really want to wanted to I wanted to acknowledge I Jake Gothier. Yeah, yeah, wanted to thank Jake Gothier for all of the hours of energy he's put in. Okay, okay. So wanted to thank the Jake. Jake, I'm going to say his name a thousand times. Jake Gothier. Thank you, Jake, Jake Gothier, Gothier, for bringing us all together you, today. Yes, at Frisbee Guru. And then, so with that, we're going to say mahalo, aloha, and we'll see you next month for the second battle of round one. Okay? Adios.